then I come home and now it's time to be a mom and let's not get on trying to be a wife oh you want some of this get out my face <laughs> Y'all, tell me why I quit my job again. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Colors. I just felt like it was only fitting <laughs> to film this video in the car because last time I filmed the uh, I quit my job video, I was in the car. So let's just bring it back to that. Now, I'm going to be kind of winging this video because I just felt like... I just filmed not too long ago the where I've been video and I thought it just made more sense to film right after that the I quit my job and your girl got no shmoney <laughs> hmm. well, I can't be out without money because I got a man so his money my money my money his money I can take care of the kids you know <laughs> I cannot believe your girl is a stay-at-home mom again that is wild okay so i wanted to talk about where i've been which i filmed that video so if you haven't checked that video out go check that video out but now in this video i want to talk about where i'm going and where i'm headed so your girl quit her job girl one thing you will learn about being a trucker or in the trucker industry as a woman is that it's a good chance that you may not be seen as an equal i absolutely love being a trucker and i'm not gonna um, turn in my cdls that's just not happening because you just never know what happens but i am for now going to be home and a stay-at-home mom so fine is i'll go i did not like my job i can i can kind of walk you through what happened i prayed i so prayed for a local job that was paying good money to where i could be home every day with my family and i essentially found that i found a job that i just felt like was the holy of coming out of the blue blessings and essentially it kind of still was but i didn't understand at to what cost because i didn't realize for one how much work i was going to be doing this is my first time being in a local position one thing you will learn in comparison to being local and when i say local i say that somewhat with a grain of salt because when i'm saying local i'm saying local in florida because i feel like local in florida and local in like texas is going to be like two different things when you're local you essentially work harder than when you're over the road when i worked over the road i was only doing all dropping hooks that was the only thing i was doing nothing else pick up wake up decide why i want to wake up start my day stop where i wanted to get to a to z couldn't make it oh well the people had to deal with it type thing like i was very much doing my own thing which i do understand is also like a beautiful situation as well but coming local and essentially having management was me being like a deer caught in headlights like that kind of struck me out of the blue and essentially i was doing two jobs in one i was working for like a construction company and i was kind of like picking orders part-time for like six hours and then actually like delivering my orders and then i was unloading my orders i was working down to the bone the crazy part is that wasn't even the worst of it like the job itself wasn't difficult but the people made it difficult. I didn't realize how misogynistic the industry was until I became local. Oh my God, was it? Mind you, there wasn't a lot of truckers. I was the only female trucker. And it was like the men didn't want to make my life easier. Essentially, they had to help pick large orders, heavy orders for me. But they only wanted to really do it for the other guys. Then they would add orders when they wasn't supposed to. Because it would be like, by 7 a.m., you're not supposed to add orders to a trucker. Because then it puts them behind on time. But they would always give me orders 
orders behind time or add stuff or make me help out another trucker and even we would go back and forth about this it was like always a thing they also would talk to me crazy like crazy and it wasn't just me they would talk to crazy they would talk to everyone crazy but i couldn't fathom it because i'm okay with doing stuff when it makes sense I'm not like a softy, but it's like, you can't be like mad disrespectful and not make sense. How you gonna be disrespectful and dumb? With these type industries and warehouse and stuff, you have a lot of, there's a lot of yelling, you know, whatever. I ignore whatever, because I'm trying to get my, my, my days done. But it was getting to the point to where it was intolerable. There would be times they were trying to pull me off of my route when I'm like, an over an hour away from the facility, they want me to come back and then go back and the worst part about that is we can actually tell the customer or negotiate about turning it in the next day, but they wouldn't do that. They would tell me I would have to come back and let the other guys wait until the next day if that happens to them. And it got to the point to where I was spending so much time traveling, even when it came to coming home, that I had to ask them, let me take the truck home to save me time because some of my stops would be like 10 minutes from my house. But I had to drive over an hour and a half to get to work. So then I started taking truck paying to, to park the truck at another location that was like $200, $230 a month. And then now they started cutting hours on top of me paying $230. And then they would try to sometimes make me return the truck on weekends and then bring it back on Monday. And then I had to find a way to get the truck back to my house so then I'll have a way to work on Monday. It was like every two weeks they was doing this. And it got to the point to where I remember thinking like my last two weeks, I was like, I can't live like this. The disrespect, mind you, I would essentially get up, start getting up at 2.30 a.m. Officially get up, it takes me a long time to get up. So I would officially get up around 3.30, leave the house around 4.40, go pick up the truck by 5.15. By 5.15, drive to work, get there about 6.05 then start picking my orders from 6 to to 10 sometimes be later and if you later if you get anywhere near 10 your day is just shot then start my routes and you'll have anywhere between 13 18 routes and that don't sound like a lot but when you done spent 46 hours picking your orders now i gotta deliver the orders the later you go the longer you're gonna be stuck in traffic. Then I gotta start 18 orders, and then that's not including that each order, half of them are pallets that I'm delivering in these buildings. And not just delivering pallets, some places I have to take stuff off the pallet and, and put it in the store. You know how long it takes something off a truck to put it on the ground? Then I gotta get it from the ground over to your building, unload it into your warehouse, your your job site, or a store. It got to the point to like, what am I doing? And then they'll call you, where you at? Sometimes they'd be wrong. The customer called me and told me this. They didn't get this, and I'll tell them that I did. I got pictures, I got record. They didn't have my back. It's like, if the customer, they, they didn't get something, they won't question, oh, you get pictures, you got any confirmations. They didn't look in their system to make sure that they actually did get it. They would call me. Why'd you calling me first? Why my first line of defense? Darn near cussing me out. They wouldn't cuss me out, but it'll feel like energy of cussing out as if I'm doing something wrong. And you seen what time I got out the building. You see my other video where I've been and how I was feeling. And now I got to the point to where I'm making good money, good sh money. And then to feel like it still ain't it. I'm home now, but I'm still not seeing my kids. And it's worse now because now I'm getting even less rest. Because when you're over the road, they make sure you get your rest. You get, you for sure get your day and a half off, and then you only can work 14 hours a day from the time you clocked in. That includes your pre-checks and pre-trips and all that stuff. No matter what you did, you went to the bathroom 14 hours, you clock out. That is not the case when you're over the road. From 3.30, I'm preparing a.m. to go to work to 
Now I'm not getting home until eight o'clock at night. That's their bedtime. By the time I put food in my system, oh my God, let's not even talk about that because a lot of times I even have time to eat. Gotta eat and work at the same time. And it was exhausting. Then I come home and now it's time to be a mom. And let's not get on trying to be a wife. Oh, you want some of this? Get out my face. <laughs> want to see it it's terrible like it was like no because i'm tired it's like 10 o'clock at night now i'm getting maybe about five hours of sleep I'm doing it again five days a week and then when you finally think you're gonna get rest no it's time to be a mom and a wife all on the weekend ain't no friends ain't no it ain't none of that so me and david the last two weeks was like well not so slow david because they be happy making money no he felt my pain too it was like the money is there so it's like what do you do but i was kind of having like an identity crisis you know sorry if i keep looking away i really can't see let's just put it like that yeah i started to really analyze what it was that i wanted was it that i want to go to another trucking job what was it that i want to be home do i want to focus on youtube what about the girls because we was also going through transitions their daycare had corporate changes so it was all around transitions between me and the girls and what did i want to do do i want to take them out do i want to put them somewhere else do i want to homeschool them you know so in the end i just decided let's give youtube a try again be a stay-at-home mom part-time and see how it goes and to the fall so that's kind of what's happening we're here i'm adjusting i'm balancing but your girl don't gotta jump again i'm not meant to be out here in these streets this is what it is this is just accepted yeah i'm home but i would so be rather be doing this than to be with them people <laughs> oh i even get to tell you uh, how your girl quit <laughs> girl i'll go to the video and then tell you how i left them i walked off on that job too that's wild. I ain't even that type of person, I promise. So what ended up happening was, I ended up, no, I gave a week notice. I was fed up with them, cause they was trying my life and they was doing extra stuff, making me do be extra late. So I come back on a Sunday, and then I tell them, I'm like, hey, this my last week. I have another job. They end up accepting that. And the crazy part too is two other people quit. Someone put in their four weeks notice. Then two weeks later, another person put in. Then some person end up getting hurt and decided not to come back the week prior. Then the next week after, I end up putting in my last week, the same week of the person the four month. But the crazy part is I didn't even stay the whole week. Nah. Nah. So the week that I told them that I was leaving, I put it in on a Monday. Was gonna leave that Friday. That Monday and Tuesday, I had a trainee, dope person by the way, went really well. But I felt like they was trying my life even more. I wasn't willing to do it anymore. In all actuality, the person I was training was the only reason why I was coming back each day because that's how fed up. Even while training this guy, the people that are supposed to help me, who's there to help me, who is warehouse workers, even while person I'm teaching, they're helping the new man more than they help me while he's riding the same truck as me. And it just does, it's not making any sense. So I remember I'm in this truck, the guy is also complaining about the shenanigans that he's already seen. Like, you gotta do all this. You gotta do all this. Man, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I was doing it with no complaint. When I tell you, I know it sounds like I'm a complainer. And I am a mentally complainer. I complain to people that they don't have nothing to do with. It's like, I never complain to them. But all the guys complain all day long. Oh my God, the guys are females. <laughs> Come bother me. And now I have a trainee, and then you help the trainee more than you help me. And you think, oh, duh, because he's a trainee. No. When the trainee got on the people about them not helping me, I mean, not helping him, then they started helping him and leaving me out. Like, it, it was wild. I remember Will's in the truck on the last stop, and I look over to that man, and I told him, I don't think I'm coming back tomorrow. He was like, damn, I really, I really wish you'd come back tomorrow. Thought about it, I sent David test message. I don't never leave without consent from him. He goes, do whatever it is that you feel. I'm not gonna tell you, but do what you gotta do. So I look over to that man and I said, 
yeah, I'm not coming back. So I give him the keys. I give him everything. And mind you, the week before, I, I brought the truck back. I stopped parking at the parking spot. I canceled my parking spot. That Friday, we decided to turn the truck in on Friday. They didn't even notice I brought the truck back. Yeah, so I already had the truck back. I started bringing my car. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing it. No, I didn't tell him I'm not doing it. I said, there's a high chance I'm not doing it. But I'm going to take my stuff just in case. So I took all my stuff. But I knew in my head if I took all my stuff, I probably wasn't coming back. And that's what happened. I ended up sending him a text message 3 o'clock the next morning. We told him I'm not coming in. I look. I was actually nice. I wrote him a long part paragraph and told him everything to do, how to do everything. He said, thank you and good luck. And I was like, yeah. And I blocked everybody else. No, you don't, we don't need to talk. We don't need to figure it out. We don't need to nothing. I said he can do whatever he wants to do to talk to them or whatever, but I wasn't doing it because I didn't feel like they deserved that. And that was all she wrote. <laughs> And then the crazy part, the next day, the guy hit me up and said that they was talking so much crap about me and all kinds of stuff. And I ain't ish and so glad she gone. And I'm just like, but all the customers like me, though. I even had customers wanted to hire me. It still wants me to work for them. As long as my customers felt otherwise, that's all that matters. I don't know. I'm happy I'm over that job. But yeah, that's what happened. I walked off on my job again. Hopefully, I don't have to go back to one. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, I'm living a stay-at-home mom life. So, expect those videos again. That's going to be all for this video. Let's have a, have a conversation down below. If you ever walked off on the job, man, did you tell them? Did you not tell them? Let's just talk about it down below. By the way, I am not celebrating walking off your job, not putting two weeks notice. I only ever did that two times in those two videos that you see. Trucking industry is kind of different when it comes to stuff like this. But that's it. That's all she wrote. So I definitely love you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.